Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is the Thermal Series, where I'll be teaching you about the Sequential Fabricator, the Lapidary Dynamo, and how to automate cured rubber. In multiple builds that I've demonstrated so far, we've had to make these, redstone flux cells, and the recipe requires cured rubber, which can be a little bit of a trial to get to, or at least make and this should help clear things up as well as give me the opportunity to demonstrate a few more new blocks. You'll want to start with a jungle sapling. Put down a couple arboreal extractors and you should be good to go once you've grown this tree up. There we are. And you know that they're working when you can see that there's like a pale uh, effect on the little screens that are on each of these. It doesn't really have to be very large or anything. You can do a two by two if you really want to expand this. Next up, we're going to be using a sequential fabricator. This is basically going to be an auto crafter for those that are curious as to what this might do. It has a lot going on in the UI interface in here. It does require power, but not much. And it will produce or automatically craft items that you tell it specifically to craft, but it will only do one recipe at a time. So you've got your power over here for what it currently has in reserve, which in this case is none. It has a liquid storage here that you can see and it's used for well crafting as well which we will demonstrate in this video uh, and then you've got your regular crafting so if i were to for instance put an oak plank in here it makes a ghost of the item and then it says do you want this to happen i'm trying to put it in this uh slot here in this storage inventory will not let me if i say yes that is what i'm looking to make then it will let me put that in there. If I had power, it would actually automatically craft this into one button, which you can of course auto output or input as you'd like. As that's not what we're looking for, I'm gonna click here and it goes away, simple enough. In this case, we're going to be making latex. And if you wait long enough, you should get a whole bunch of latex in your arboreal extractors. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to add in some phyto grow just so that the next harvests will end up being a bit more productive than usual. Uh, speed things up as it is, but it should at least help us out. We already have 200 in here. If we had a thousand, we would be able to bucket it out with a bucket. Then you can take that bucket and put it in the sequential fabricator and tell it that this is what you want and it will make rubber. You do not actually need the bucket after that. It's only to tell it what recipe you need because it has an input tank. So you need to tell it where to go. If you input from the side and the back because of where I placed it, it is adjacent to both of these items. It should work out just fine provided you turn on the auto input. And there we have it, 600 latex. Of course, you will need a full bucket's worth for it to actually craft this into rubber. Now, rubber by itself is not going to be enough. You want cured rubber. So we're going to be using it in a redstone furnace. Now, I have covered this in the past before. You just need to place it on top and have it input from the bottom. And of course, you need to output on the sequential fabricator and automatically push that through. So the redstone furnace will smelt these up over time and it could actually back up. So if you want to have a backup storage of this because it's automatically processing, then you might as well just have it output onto the side into a chest. Simple enough. There we go. Now, because it's dark under this tree, this is my own preference. I'm just going to decorate things with a little lantern. And then we need to have power, which is where I introduce you to our next friend. Assuming you have these in place, You've turned on the inputs and outputs as well as where the power needs to flow. Input on the back here just because I like making things into cubes because we're playing a cube game here. You can put down your lapidary dynamo. Now you don't need to use a lapidary dynamo, it is strictly optional, but you will need to have this face inwards. What does this do? It is a block that burns valuables and gives you power. In this case, you could use prismarine for 40,000, lapis for 40,000, diamonds for a whopping half a million, rubies, sapphires, and emeralds all for 125,000, and nether quartz for 40,000. So if you have an excess of whatever of any of these, or if you have a farm going on for any of these items, you could do so. But in this case, I'm gonna take a shortcut and use some diamonds. And because I'm showing you in a creative mode setting already, I'm going to boost it so it's going to give me a lot more power. And this should get me going with power into these two machines so that it'll be going a little bit quicker. As you can see, the redstone furnace is already smelting up the first batch of cured rubber. 
And if I bucket in more of this latex, which I think it's pretty obvious that uh, it's being used, it quickly makes these into the rubber that we need for cured rubber. And then it will automatically output to the side once enabled. And as soon as that process finished, the cured rubber came off into this chest here, which it will then infinitely make for quite some time, uh, provided that you have enough power here. Now, if you have another tree nearby of a different type that would produce the right type of sap instead of latex, like the jungle saplings do, then you could use that to infinitely power this and get yourself as much cured rubber as you want. Why would you want that? Well, one of two reasons. You could feasibly use it to make all sorts of different upgrades and such, or you could use it as a block of cured rubber to bounce around your base, or just some different things for decorating. And it doesn't just have to be cured rubber, you don't have to smelt everything in a redstone furnace. If you so desired, you could take your regular rubber and turn it into blocks of rubber that's kind of a creamy color and use that for building as well. Now there isn't too much more to this, I just wanted to make it quick and simple how you could automate some cured rubber, as well as a few things about these blocks. Now you could use that sequential fabricator for a lot more tasks if you so desired. It can even replace, in some cases, a multi-servo press, and could potentially be a little bit cheaper to use. Uh, either way, having an auto crafter in the thermal series is really valuable to me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch, click the notification bell on either platform, and until next time, I'll see ya.